Good morning. Welcome again. Days ago, while I was in front of my computer screen reading the Tayubi index results to see how my favorite languages were doing, they were getting humiliated. The thing that caught my eye was this guy, Fortran. The only thing I knew about it was the fact that it is the oldest programming language. And that got me thinking, if C is really obsolete, what the hell this guy is doing here? So, I got to it. I did some research and decided to learn it and sacrifice my own personal well-being for the sake of knowledge. Now, I know what you're thinking. Assembly is the oldest. Why not try assembly? More into that later. As always, let's start with some boring history. Fortran or Formula Translating System, invented by the folks from IBM in 1957, and the story behind it was simply this guy was tired from writing assembly code. Now, in order to use the early versions, I'm going to need a giant IBM computer and THICK carton papers to write some numbers on them. Luckily though, the geezers from the GNU project made a compiler that supports legacy versions from version 77. Cool. Surprisingly, their website looked decent, it was easy to navigate and had a friendly beginner guide to completely no-brainers like me. We can use MUCK. And just like any other language, we go with the usual. Print something to the screen, variables, data types, arrays, strings, for loops, then get bored and go watch a hardworking Twitch streamer. <laughs> what the fuck? My initial goal was to create a password generator that generates, well, Passwords. It is very simple. You just need to find a way to generate random numbers, make sure it is working, look for what characters experts recommend. Ah, eh, use the whole ASCII table anyway. Create a full loop, get some errors, get even more errors, ask the user for the password length, gently. Print some numbers to the screen, turn those numbers into characters, and... Eight. Yeah, oh, no, what the f... Yo, uh, <laughs> sec faults. It is usually an error raised by your hardware telling your system, telling your software that is, it's trying to access restricted areas in memory. To avoid that, all I had to do was to declare this guy and... Oh. While doing whatever I was doing, the language made my brain sec fault for a couple of times. For some reason, I kept forgetting how to do even simple stuff. Ah. Uh... Despite all of that, the little piece of software I was working on was done. It was working as intended. The process wasn't quite easy, but in the end of the day, I learned a few things along the way. I was happy, fortunate, not fulfilled. I convinced myself to do something more interesting, not just a few lines of code that generates a string. And that's when it hit me. Boris. You might have seen this before, a delicious spinning 3D donut in the abyss of your terminal. So I thought it would be a good idea to build something I have absolutely no idea how it works with something I have no idea how to use. Alright? No. To start, I couldn't think of any better place than... Uh, yeah. Where he posted this blog post that explains every piece of math behind it. Ahem, <clears throat> hello. So. This is what we all know as a circle, and this is our torus. All we have to do is to make a 2D circle revolve around some axis while it's sweeping an angle. And as you can see, the donut has a hole in the center. To mimic that, we just need the X coordinate of the circle to be greater than its radius, or it will be, um, yeah. And lastly, the circle has to do at least one revolution around the Y axis by using the rotation matrix. And there you have it, a torus. We ain't done yet, because the torus looks kind of boring. We need to rotate it around two other axes, and to do that, we need more rotation matrices. What is left to do is to project this 3D madness we have done to our square junky 2D screen. And to do that, we use what is known as perspective projection, which is even more math. Sir? Sir? We can't see anything. Well... That's because we don't have a source of light. And to create a sense of illumination, well, we need even more math. Anyway, the process of writing all of that code wasn't easy. Even with the help of the pseudocode my dear friend uh, yeah, has provided. The first obstacle that came in my way was this. but with some very advanced debugging techniques which helped me to find the line that was causing the error. I immediately made the assumption that I was going out of bounds because I was trying to access some stuff inside 
to the array. So I made my way to Compiler Explorer to test and confirm my hypothesis. The results were as follows. Arrays start at 1, you go big, things go boom, the language design is interesting. So, all I had to do was to do a little check right here just to make sure things don't go south. And the sec fault in was no more. At that point, what was left to do was to render a single frame of my little donut. I mean, how hard could it be? All I have to do was to print some characters to the screen and... Uh, After a painful night of fighting with my shit code, I went to bed. I was thinking of giving up. Maybe I'm not ready for this. Maybe I'm not smart enough. And fall asleep anyway. The next morning I did some code refactoring, checked my math, had no idea what I was looking at, and this happened. A single frame of my tasty 2D kind of 3D donut. The last step was simply animating it with an endless loop that clears the screen and draws another frame. Well, it wasn't that hard because after second try that morning, I pulled it off and finally finished my 3D donut. And yes, I hear what you're saying. It doesn't look like a donut. I know, I kind of agree. You know what my grandpa used to say? If you do have a problem, don't try to solve it, just hide it away. So, I decided to add colors, and that by using the American National Standards Institute escape codes. What are they exactly? I don't know. I just use them to add colors in my terminal. That's it. The task which I thought was going to be easy, well, it was not, because I had no idea how to bring this to that. I just had to figure out how character escaping works in that language and try it out in the actual product, which got me very interesting results. But honestly, it didn't take that much of time. After a few minutes, I finally finished it. Is that it? Um. Well. What a dream, bro. That's it. I'm done here. Honestly, kind of lovely language. The only thing I don't understand why it's still being used till this day while we have all these other technologies. Is it just to carry legacy code? I don't know. The single thing I hated about it was the fact that you have to declare all of your variables right in the start of your program. You can't declare them anywhere else. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Otherwise, cool language to play with. Thank you guys for the huge support you show me lately and uh, yeah, su su subscribe or I will.